Okay, today we're looking at Inventor. Specifically, we're looking at creating counterbores, turning it into an IDW or drawing file, placing the dimensions, and then placing whole notes on that counterbore. So we're looking at the same drawing we did do back in AutoCAD. I did provide for you a picture of this up because the regular pack that we've been using, all the dimensions were cut off. So you have that to look at. All right, so we're going to start out by just a new English folder, standard IPT. I'm going to draw the basic front view shape of this, starting a new 2D sketch on the front view plane here. So you see my front. I'm going to sketch out the basic shape of this one. So I'm going to start here. I'm first going to go to the right. The full width is 7, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and pan over. So I got about almost 7 there. Good. Up oh, just over an inch. So I'll go there. Back. Then I also have this one that goes up. And I have to create a center line, kind of, or like a midpoint of where this line is going to go for my circle. So from there to there. So I'm using some CAD tools without any of the, without any of the exact numbers. So I'm just kind of stretching this out, piecing it together. There's a few different ways you could have done this. Go ahead and pause and go back if you need to, or try a different way. So I can then trim that. So now I can dimension from center to the bottom which is supposed to be 3. And this radius, well, it's in diameter, so it should be 1.62 times 2 for my day. And nope. Just go ahead and put in 1.6 to work. There we go. Full width should be 7. And this height should be 1.12. And let's see, what else does it want? So I want that one. Okay, that'll make it fully dimensioned. All right, so once you have the basic shape, shape, definitely move on. But if you are lost somewhere, go ahead and pause and go back and maybe find your own way to draw this. Cause there's a couple of different ways that you could. Cause that way was a, it was a little, little shaky, but I, I made it there. All right, so once you have everything fully constrained in purple, you can finish the sketch. I'm gonna zoom out and extrude. Remember, you do not want a collection of sketches here. You should only have one sketch. So I'm gonna extrude the surface and it has a full depth of three and now I need to create another 2d sketch this is where I'm going to place points for my holes so I'm going to place a point and I should be able to just click and find the center right there you can dimension it I think the program wants you to, to talk, oh it actually just found right there constrained right in the center so that'll just work just like that so you don't even need that as long as you put it in the center over here, though, I am going to need to dimension it. So if I do a new 2D sketch in the top view of this, and I place a point, I can probably find the middle point here if I select that and just kind of track over. But I still am going to have to dimension from the center of this to the edge, which that is supposed to be 1.5. And then from here to the top, also 1.5. Okay, so now you can see that turned purple showing that it's fully constrained. So now I have two points and I have two more sketches here. So now I'm actually going to apply a hole this time to both of these. To both of these. So I have, before we did this, a regular drill hole, now we're going to go do a counter bore. And this counter bore, if we read our text, it is a 1.5 that goes through, a 2 inch counter bore, that's a larger one, 0.5 deep. So what that means here, we have two inch, oh, I forgot already. Two inch counterboard for the wider part, 1.5 that goes through. So this wider part is two. The diameter of the smaller part is 1.5. And then the depth of this part was 0.5. So it's drilled in 0.5. And how far this is? Uh, it says one inch, that should actually say through all. So then this gets drilled completely through. Otherwise, if it was a distance, it would say how far in for it to go. In this case, we have a through all. Two inch diameter counter bore. If you, if you hover over it and stay still, the text pops up. Counter bore diameter, two inches. Counter bore depth, 0.5. Diameter, 1.5 that goes through. Now I can just simply select that point there, and that'll automatically pop up. And then I can actually, I think within the same one, I can select 
no, I can't select that one. I can just check mark that. And I have to do a hole. And I have to select that one separate. It automatically shows that point because that's the only thing left over. So if I do hole, by default it wants to do that because there's nothing else to choose. And all these should remain the same. And it should save in there. So if I change from hole to counterbore, yeah, it saves your your last ones that you did. Yeah, don't worry about these ones yet. We'll get into those later, but this is just a basic simple hole. So just go ahead and hit OK. And there are your two counterbores already done for you. So like all the other ones, we're going to start a new JT title block, do our base, and by default, if it doesn't pop up to be your last model, just go ahead and change your part and make sure you save it properly. So this one is actually, what does this one? Should probably save. Save as number eight. So now my title block, I can now save that as not in templates, decad, inventor. This should be number eight sheet. Okay, now I'm ready to place my base. And my top view, my right side view, and my isometric, I can do it all at one time. Right click create. And I can just kind of move all these to where I need them to go. Is that one still going to fit? Yeah, this should be okay. We might have to shrink this one down later. Okay. That one can go on color. Okay. All right, before I start placing dimensions, I'm going to put some annotations on here. My center marks, selecting the largest arc, so the larger one here. And then I'm also going to... Why did that one pop up? That's okay. And then I'm also going to do my center line. I'm actually... Let's try center line bisector. I think it's not going to go through all the way. Yeah, it only does between those two lines, but I want this to extend out all the way. So it makes it makes it a little weird. So can I extend it? Yeah, I can extend it, but you can see it just doesn't look right how there's a one part that's longer than the other. So we're going to do a center line this time. And by default, it is going to find the midpoint between these two. If I click and click, I kind of guesstimate about how far that'll be. I know it's supposed to be an eighth, but if you just move the mouse away a little bit, match it the best you can. So same with here, center line. Oh, why doesn't want to find that one? All right, so it doesn't want to find this one because it doesn't happen to be on a midpoint, whereas the rest of these, the center of this, just so happens to be on a midpoint, so that'll work there. Right-click, create. Same with this one, I can click and click. Right click, create, and there we go. So let's see what happens if I go back with this one. Center line, yep, another midpoint. Click, right click, create. Yep, so right click, create will put it at the right distance. This one, though, we're going to have to do, I think, a little bit of modifying. So I'm going to do my center line bisector again. Let's do between here and here. I'm going to go ahead and select it and stretch it. Yeah, it should be fine. Let's not worry about our dashes here in this case. I do want to find out what's up with this one, though. Center mark. Okay, you can do two center marks in this one. I don't know why that one's not going all the way. Either way, it'll be okay, though. All right, so now we are ready to dimension our height from the center of the circle to the bottom. This height It's basically just like you see in the packet file that pretty much the exact same thing. We have that radius, we have our depth, and we also have from the center to the edge, 1.5, center to the edge again, locating the center of that counter bore. We do not need any dimensions down here for that because they're all up here. And the last thing we need is just a hole and thread note, so if we select this one, I'm not sure, let's see if it finds out, depending on which one we do. Let's see if did that. Yeah, they tell the same thing, so it doesn't really matter which one you select, because they're both going to say the same text, because it's part of the same whole feature. So it tells us we have our 1.5 through, 2-inch counterbore diameter with a proper symbol, with a depth of 0.5. And really, I don't think we even need that right, right side view. You can keep it if you want, otherwise that'll create a little bit more room for our isometric here. 
center those a little bit. Bring this one down. And I did miss one. I have my overall width. So I'm actually, I can put that in my top view. Maneuver some of these around. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, sorry that was a little jumpy. But yeah, we have our overall height, overall width, overall depth, location of our counterbore, the height of the shorter part here, our radius of this larger circle, and then our notes for these counterbores, which, by the way, should also say, if I hit enter, times two for two of them. Or that looks a little weird. Let's make that just say two holes in all caps. There we go. All right, that'll do it.